All right, so quick story time. So a lot of people have been asking me about what happened when we moved in. In the first six hours, we got home invaded. Here's the story. So everyone was gone. I was just with my friend Camilla and we were pulling in. At the time, Fez actually tried to plug his Tesla car into the garage and the garage lost all electricity. Therefore, the, the clicker wouldn't work. You'd have to get out of your car, manually open it and then manually close it. It just turned night, so it was about 7 p.m. When we pull up, I'm in the I-8 and I get out of the car. I go to lift the garage door open. I lift the garage completely open and I start to back it in. So as I'm backing in, this guy comes out of nowhere. Huge guy comes out of nowhere and starts yanking on Sebas's door because Sebas's door is directly linked to the garage door. I'm like, hey man, what's going on? He goes, oh, I'm just here to see him. And I go, what? He's like, I'm just here to see him. And I start, my heart started pounding a bit because I started getting like really bad vibes at this point. He's like, I'm just here to see him. Are they here? And I go, no, they all left. And he's like, what? They all left? Fuck. And then he didn't leave. I, before I moved here, one of my friends said that a lot of people live in the hills because there's no patrolling. Therefore, it's good for like throwing like big parties because there's no cops like patrolling. But also, a lot of people target the Hollywood Hills to rob places because there is no patrolling. That thought instantly crossed my mind. I'm like, all right, well, this is what's going on for sure. So I'm like, okay, I need to get this guy out of the garage because he wasn't leaving the garage and he started calling someone. So he started whispering a little bit um, like this. And he's like, hey, man, anything to do? And I'm like, Camilla, I, c I couldn't say anything because I didn't want to. I didn't want to cause any confrontation at the moment. I didn't want any confrontation. No, I want I wanted to get rid of this guy with little amount because he could destroy me if he really wanted to. So anyway, I just started buying time because again, no one was home. I thought this guy was calling like, hey, nobody's at this house, just these two kids. Let's take this place or something like that. So I was just like, okay, I'm just going to keep backing in. Like I can't get it lined up or something. So I just backed up once. I backed up again. I backed up once. I backed up again. I backed out. And as I'm backing out, I see him like go around the corner to like check something. I forget. Boom. I back it up super quick. Get out of the car. Run. I slam the garage door right in this guy's face. So I go, come on. I had no clue who that guy was. And then I called Sebas and I go, hey, Sebas, did you have someone here to see you? Because maybe it was like his friend, but I didn't think so because he's from Miami. And he goes, no, I know. And I go, something bad's really happening. And I hung up. We came back right over here and I started calling the cops. Get this guy's LA cops. They put me on hold for 16 minutes. I talked to the like main operator and I was like, there's someone at my house right now to rob this place. There's someone at this house right now to rob this place. And he goes, okay, hold on for the next operator. Put me on hold for 16 minutes and we're just back here like fucking terrified. So the 16 minutes goes by, I finally get someone on hold and then another 10 minutes before any cops come. But they started taking it seriously. It's not one cop car, not two cop car, not three cop car, not four cop cars, not five cop cars, but six cop cars came because they actually knew who this guy was. I'll get to that in a second. And they sent a helicopter out after him because he wasn't here. If they didn't put me on hold for 16 minutes, they would have got him. Since they put me on hold for 16 minutes and then I got the report in, they actually saw the guy right before the report and they turned around. They couldn't find him anymore. So all the cops come in and they're like, oh yeah, we know this guy. We've actually arrested him before for this exact thing. So what he actually does is he goes around to empty hill, uh, hills houses and he just lives there as long as he possibly can. The window was half open when we got here. So we assume that's how he's getting in and out. So all the cops are outside. They're about to leave and all of a sudden they hear a sound inside like Brrr. and they're like, they went inside. They go, no, no, no. All right. And they're like, all right, gear up. They grab their like shotguns. They grab their guns and everything. And guys, this is six hours from me getting to LA. Like my last video when I arrived is six hours after that. So they all gear up. They grab their guns and they go, LAPD coming in. Get down. Get down. We thought this guy was in there for sure. Oh, and I forgot to mention a part. While we we're on hold, me and Camilla were standing right here. We were behind this door. Okay. I completely forgot about this. So we came down here and we're hiding behind here because we started hearing noises in the, in the house. We thought this guy somehow got in and was coming after us for sure. So we're down there and we're talking on the cops and all of a sudden while I'm making the report like five minutes in, I hear someone open that door over there and they start to walk onto the patio. They're on the phone too. I'm like, yo, they're here right now. They're in the house right now. That must be why they sent six cops. They're in the house right now. Come save me. Come save me or something like that. I'm just in there and all of a sudden I hear like Mikey's voice on Sebas's phone and I look up and it's Sebas and Andreas, two people who were here earlier. I'm like, oh, thank God guys. So yeah, then the cops come and they raid the house. There's no one in it and we finally got power. And yeah, that's basically the end of the story. They never caught the guy, but they say that he just keeps taking plea deals in order to keep doing this because he doesn't have any money. They can't really, they want to throw him in jail. So he just keeps taking plea deals. He keeps living in these houses. But that was a crazy, crazy moment because I was like, oh God, like we're going to have to deal with this guy all the time. Like just like, I don't know what was going to really come from it. But at the end of the day, nothing really happened. But now let's just say we all took precautions to make sure that that shit never happens again. We're all safe and sound. It's an update on me. It took about a week to really settle in, get everything done. Now I'm getting back into everything. I can't really do anything until I'm 100% comfortable. Now I got the room how I want it, the house how I want it, just my lifestyle how I want it. I got everything situated, like the gym, we go to the Equinox and everything. Now it's perfect. Now we just grind it out every single day. We go to the gym, then we get back and we just grind, grind, grind. So you're going to be seeing a lot more come from me. There's a lot of plans in the future. I'm going to be taking full advantage of this LA time. Plan on staying here for a long time, but I don't like to plan too far. You never know what's going to happen. So guys, that's the end of this. I never done one of these story times, but apparently this is what YouTubers do. So I was getting a ton of messages about what happened. I didn't really put it on my Instagram too much. So this is what happened. We're all good. It was a wild experience, but you live and you learn. Now we're good. Now we're really good. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.